In America, everyone counts, and the 2020 census is how that great promise is kept. Respond today online, by phone, or by mail, and help inform hundreds of billions in funding for education, health programs, and more. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov. Uh, to course, the campaign trail, uh, it actually was silent today with the focus on the 19th anniversary of 9-11. Donald Trump and Joe Biden both paid tribute to the nearly 3,000 people killed in the deadliest terrorist attack in U.S. history during separate trips to Shanksville, Pennsylvania, a battleground state in the race for president. The two men honored the 40 passengers and crew members who died after battling hijackers aboard United, United Airlines Flight 93. Senator Kamala Harris, she traveled to Fairfax, Virginia with her husband Doug Imhoff to deliver remarks at a remembrance ceremony there. So today we honor those lost in New York, Pennsylvania, and right here in Virginia. We remember the passengers and crew members, the firefighters, law enforcement, peace officers, and military personnel. We remember that they were more than vi victims of an unspeakable act. They were also parents and sons and daughters and neighbors and friends. And we know that they will never be defined by the story of those who stole them away. No, they will be defined by their humanity, by their stories, by their laughter that still echoes in the homes and hearts of those who love them. What our attackers failed to understand is that the darkness they hoped would envelop us on 9-11 instead summoned our most radiant and defined human instincts, the instinct to care for one another, to transcend our divisions and see ourselves as fellow citizens, to race toward danger and risk everything to protect each other, the instinct to unite. If we learned anything watching the heroes of 9-11, it's that the strength of the human spirit knows no bounds, and that even the gravest threats against us only serve to reveal our true strength, that our capacity to act with love and courage in the face of immense challenge is what defines us as Americans. The death toll from the attack continues to rise to this day because those who worked at Ground Zero in the aftermath are dying of a number of related illnesses, including some call it the 9-11 cancer. Uh, that's also as has been happening there as well. Again, today you also saw Joe Biden. Uh, he was uh, there in New York, uh, did cross paths at one point uh, with uh, Vice President um, uh, Mike Pence. They did uh, uh, greet one another. Thankfully, both of them were actually wearing masks as well. Uh, one of the things that Joe Biden did today was he announced that uh, he was he had pulled down all of his uh, campaign commercials and said there's going to be no campaigning today. Uh, this is uh, what he actually had to say when he landed. Um, not sure why we're not seeing it. Um, all right, we saw. Okay, do y'all see it now? Okay, here we go. Guys, I'm not going to be making any news today. I'm not going to talk about anything other than 9-11. We took all our advertising down. It's a solemn day. That's how we're going to keep it, okay? I, I'm not, uh, you can determine what I may do, but I'm not going to be holding a press conference, all right? It's a solemn day. We took all our advertising down. We'll get back to the campaign tomorrow. Thank you. One of the things that was uh, really interesting that when we were, uh, Donald Trump, when he spoke in Pennsylvania, Derek, he started talking about a couple of the terrorists uh, who uh, had been killed in his administration. They had nothing to do with 9-11. Uh, and that struck some people as odd that he would be sitting here bragging about these terrorists that they took out when it had nothing to do with what took place on 9-11. Uh, that, that was a sense of campaigning uh, in there as well. Uh, but, but thank goodness uh, on, on, you know, this is a day where you would hope there would not be any campaigning at all. I thought that was very interesting um, that Joe Biden, uh, what he said, coming off the plane, he took down his ads and there would be no campaigning. 
Um, but at the same time, I, I feel like uh, with the president, I, who knows, I can't get in his mind. I don't know what he's thinking. I never try to. But uh, I guess he felt like it was an opportunity to use it as a campaign, uh, an opportunity on campaign trail. Um, but I do know that 9-11, uh, it was a difficult time. It was a difficult time for me. Um, I know uh, I was at the time working as a national sales manager, Radio 1, and I was home that day and um, living in Fort Washington. I heard the boom and the explosion when it hit the Pentagon. Had friends inside of that place. So um, I, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a day that, that, that hits me every year. And so uh, I, I, I appreciate you know, people just taking time out today um, because it is a, it, it's a day that lives uh, an infamy for a lot of people. Amisha, folks talk about the, um, the the empathy, if you will, of Joe Biden. Uh, this is what took place today in New York. I want to get your thoughts on this. David Shelby Barry. Joseph John Barry. William Reed. It's one of the things there, Misha, again, we don't, we will never expect to see Donald Trump doing anything like that uh, with, with a 90-year-old uh, mother who lost her son, uh, showing that level of compassion and care. You're absolutely right. I mean, Joe Biden is a class act, whether he is running for office or not. What we know about him and what we have known about him historically is that Joe Biden does not have an empathy deficit. He understands what people are going through. He is a very feeling man. He is authentic. When he oh, speaks to people, he speaks to people as if he's known them for years. He draws in on his own emotion, and he also has a he has a good listening ear. If you're paying attention to that clip, part of it was also he was hearing her story, and he was, you know, speaking back to her. He was making her feel as though she was a friend, as though, you know, her life mattered. What she went through mattered. Obviously, the sacrifice of losing a loved one, um, mattered. And I think that for Americans who are looking at 9-11 right now, Americans who may have sons or daughters who are serving in the armed forces today, because we know the war on terror, even though we don't, you know, technically say that in, in the same terms anymore, is still ongoing. There's still a lot of troops serving overseas. Um, those families are still praying that, you know, a lot of their a lot of their loved ones return safely. And I think that having somebody like Joe Biden, who has shown time and time again that he cares, that he is capable of showing love, that he is capable of showing the fact that he understands and is a listener and isn't forceful. I think that those are things that he leans on throughout the campaign, but especially on a day like today that is solemn, that means so much to the American population. That, you know, is, is, is a day that he not only pulled campaign ads, but a day that he has spent literally honoring not only those who died, um, at 9-11, but also the first responders, also the people that you spoke of earlier who are still living with the devastating health effects of 9-11. And I think that that says a lot about Joe Biden's character. Uh, the thing, uh, Joseph, is that moving forward, when you talk about this campaign, folks, different candidates bring different traits to the table. One of the reasons why Joe Biden is polling uh, so well, especially with older voters, is because of what you saw in that video. Uh, that's absolutely right, Roland. I mean, say what you will about Joe Biden uh, and his policies. He is an amazing retail politician. If we're going to take it away from the from the individual sphere and talk about it from that aspect, it blows the doors off Donald Trump when he can meet somebody one on one and hear what they're having to say versus a president who is talking about his own achievements half the time and is 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 just so remarkably tone deaf on an occasion like today that he's talking about a terrorist who had nothing to do with 9-11. Uh, and 
if you take that and extrapolate it even a little bit further, you talk of you, you you see the fact that he hasn't had any empathy during the COVID nineteen crisis, and and some politicians have remarked. I think it was uh, Chuck Schumer had talked about the fact that there has been uh, the equivalent of a nine eleven every week since this crisis has been going on in terms of deaths, and and you extrapolate that even further, and you talk about the number of African Americans who have died uh, from COVID nineteen, and the fact that that we have this empathy gap uh, between our candidates. It should make it a no brainer. For some reason, it doesn't. All right, folks, back to our Roland Martin Unfiltered video in just one moment. As our community comes together to support the fight against racial injustice, I want to take a second to talk about one thing we can do to ensure our voices are heard. Not tomorrow, but now. Have your voices heard in terms of what kind of future we want by taking the 2020 census today at 2020census.gov? Now, folks, let me help you out. The census is a count of everyone living in the country. It happens once every 10 years. It is mandated by the U.S. Constitution. The thing that's important is that the census informs funding, billions of dollars, how they are spent in our communities every single year. I grew up in Clinton Park in Houston, Texas, and we wanted, to, we wanted new parks and roads and a senior citizen center. Well, the census helps inform all of that and where funding goes. It also determines how many seats your state will get in the U.S. House of Representatives. Young black men and young children of color are historically undercounted, which means a potential loss of funding of services that helps our community. Folks, we have the power to change that. We have the power to help determine where hundreds of billions in federal funding go each year for the next 10 years. Funding that can impact our community, our neighborhoods, and our families and friends. Folks, responses are 100% confidential and can't be shared with your landlord, law enforcement, or any government agency. So please, take the 2020 census today. Shape your future. Start at 2020census.gov.